I want to stay on the topic of China for just one moment. We were talking about uh, the strategy when it comes to joint ventures and making the most of opportunities in that market. How difficult is it to operate within that market where you talk about relevance for your consumers, right? When it comes to relevance in China, it's all about fintech, it's all about you know, WePay and Alipay. Where does city and conventional banking fit in within that infrastructure? Well, it is a very competitive market and a market that is moving, I believe, faster than any other market in terms of embracing digital technologies and mobile technologies. Uh, and we have embraced them uh, very, very fast. As, uh, as I said earlier, we, uh, three years ago, started to go open banking and uh, China has been at the forefront on that. We have partnered with the major fintech uh, companies to enable connectivity and engagement with our clients in a way that we are able today to acquire clients digitally, service them digitally, and engage with them, giving them value back digitally. And that is, I think, the key to solving for a competitive relationship with our clients and customers in China. Uh, I think the physical footprint is uh, less and less of our priority for our clients and certainly for us. Uh, Francisco, we're just getting some more lines out from the PPOC Governor Yi Gang speaking there at the Lu Jiazui Forum in Shanghai, saying China will push forward with Yuan internationalization. Uh, the Chinese economy has shifted to high quality development era. Uh, in terms of the type of development that we're seeing, steadily promoting capital count convertibility, how does city take advantage of these reforms, which, which are very politically driven, right? It's, it, I'd imagine it's quite difficult to make investment decisions based on policies that sometimes change from, it seems, day to day or week to week. Indeed, and we, we have a long-term view uh, towards China, certainly to, uh, to the 99 countries and markets we serve around the world. But in essence, what we do is that we follow our clients, and we follow the dialogue we're having with our clients. And the, the fact that China continues to reform and open to the rest of the world is incredibly exciting and makes the opportunity for us larger and larger every day. And uh, in our, given our uh, legacy and footprint in China uh, since 1902, what we are is incredibly well positioned to serve our clients come in and out of China as they invest uh, throughout the region and take advantage of further and further opportunities to invest in China. So for us, uh, as the FX market opens up uh, or the connectivity with the rest of Asia continues to be at the heart of the Chinese investment, uh, we are there in the center of those flows enabling yeah, that's, that connectivity. That, that's it. I mean, but the, the wealth market, the, the, how do you tackle that and how are you tackling that? That should be one of your major growth drivers in China. It is indeed, and it's glowing double digits. One of the things that we did a couple of years ago is pivot from a broad retail strategy to a wealth-focused strategy in China, and that has enabled us to improve our product offering and certainly provide tools to our relationship managers to engage digitally with our clients Absolutely. in a way that before we couldn't do it through that, the branches. That, that is your key message. Is digitalization. It is clearly, indeed, clearly. Yes. right. So, so who do you hire? Where, where's the talent you're hiring? Because we've seen some of these other Western banks, uh, even some of the ones uh, from Singapore and Southeast Asia, perhaps right size in this part of the world. Um, and so that's, that's some of the talent pool there. Are you hiring from them? We are. We are indeed hiring uh, across the markets. Uh, and what we're finding is, is we're finding very good talent. Yes. City is seen as a growing platform throughout Asia. Uh, and we have been able to attract the talent we want to hire, uh, not only in China, but certainly around the region. And, uh, and as we see our own numbers and results improve and grow sustainably quarter after quarter, uh, and we're seeing a profound impact of the digitization of our strategy, both in the institutional business and the consumer business, has become an incredibly attractive platform for talent. Uh, Belt and Road, major initiative among these foreign banks. You're involved with that. What are the challenges here and what are you actually doing? What's in the pipeline very quickly here? Well, we are supporting uh, corporate clients take advantage of the different projects that are coming through the pipe. Uh, and they are indeed, as I said, in uh, many of the countries we have a longstanding presence in. And uh, we see a number of opportunities around, not only in financing some of these uh, projects and opportunities, but certainly providing advice to our clients in terms of how to deal with some of these markets uh, where the funds are going through. Uh, so for us, they are large projects, infrastructure projects, but at the same time, uh, incredible opportunities to continue to expand and increase our capacity to advise clients strategically as they expand on the back of Belt and Road uh, throughout the region. Francisco, City was one of the foreign lenders that's been kind of embroiled in this allegation of cartel activity uh, to do with the 2015 share placement at ANZ. Where are we at with this and, and how do you anticipate that this will be resolved? Well, it, it is an unfortunate outcome. Uh, there's not much I can say given that it's a live uh, legal process going on, but I would reiterate that uh, we will defend our talent uh, and staff vigorously. 
uh, and of course our institution. We have an extraordinary franchise in Australia. We've been there since 1965. Uh, and we've served clients uh, with distinction uh, for that period of time, 52 years. Uh, and we're incredibly proud of, of our talent uh, and franchise in Australia. So we will definitely support our talent and staff and defend uh, them uh, through this process. Uh, you know, here in Australia, you may know we have an ongoing Royal Commission into essentially the conduct of the big banks, which have a reputation for being wildly profitable uh, in this part of the world, but also pretty poor reputationally. You look at some of these things, like the allegations of cartel uh, activity, like the unrelated allegations that CBA is fighting about, you know, money laundering and, and uh, terrorism financing. Is there a sense that nothing really has changed since the global, global financial crisis in terms of these headlines? of banks behaving badly. Is there a culture issue in your sector? Well, I believe that, uh, speaking for City, we have made a tremendous offer, uh, effort over the last 10 years to improve our culture. Uh, we have invested heavily in open the ante on ethics and the way we come to work every day, and that has reflected in the way we operate. Uh, I believe that most institutions have done the same in different ways, uh, and the industry has reacted very proactively to the crisis. So I believe that today we're serving our clients better across the spectrum.